if the good Lord in heaven moves in, nobody don't care what time we get out of church. But I'm not one that's going to just drag it out within myself. Now, I want these ladies to sing when they'll sing. Uh, but uh, maybe I'll take a little less time or I'll turn the Sunday school superintendent over to somebody else. Uh, but anyway, we will uh, we'll, we'll get her in order and uh, get the way the Lord wants it. And, and uh, uh, I'll win uh, in the next few, few weeks. Matthew chapter number 10. We want to begin reading in verse number 16. And I've said many times how that the word of God, especially the New Testament, was written to the Jews. It's for our benefit. Paul said every word was for our uh, benefit. Uh, but it was written basically to the Jews uh, before the coming of Christ. And we know after the Acts, the day of Pentecost, that uh, th that everybody received the Holy Spirit of God when they believe. We all know that. Uh, and verses that we're reading this morning was written to the disciples, but it was also uh, benefit us and right on up till uh, the disciples and our day and age and right on up until the second coming. So you pray and we'll try our best to uh, just briefly show what the Lord has given us for today. Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 16, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogue. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you up, take no thought of what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. The father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when, the, uh, when they persecute you in the city, flee ye uh, into another, for verily I say unto you, ye shall uh, not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Lord, we thank you today for the precious Word of God. We praise you, Lord, today for each and every one that's made their way out. Lord, we beg today for the help, the leadership, the guidance. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do in the days ahead. Lord, we know it's always been a battle and it always will be a battle, but Lord, it's worth it. Help us today. Father, touch these old lips of clay and anoint. Give us the words you'd have us to say. Nothing more, nothing less. Bless your word and help your servant. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Now I could uh, go into a lot of things here this morning that I really I, 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 don't, uh, I don't cherish going into. Uh, so I'm just going to drop them. But I want to look at verse number 16. If the Lord would help me for just a few minutes. The Bible said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as servants and harmless as doves. Now, you know, church, if we aren't real careful when we talk about, we know he was talking to the disciples, but it was to us as well. And when you and I go out each time, it uh, gets uh, down through the years a little more difficult to try to get folks to understand. The, uh, that's why the Bible tells us to raise up a child in the way that it should go when it's old, it'll not depart from. The, the older that they get, uh, the more difficult it is to get them to understand and to see and to know. They look around and they feel that they've accomplished everything and they didn't, they didn't have the Lord and they don't need Him now. But what they don't understand is, is that after they leave this world, one of the greatest joys I ever had in my life, I guess, was well, seeing a 96-year-old man and a 93-year-old woman get saved. I'm telling you, one of walking down the, the baptistry that way and one of walking, they're ready to walk down the baptistry that way. I, it's just uh, unreal. But God is still able. God still can save whoever. He said, whosoever will, let him call on me. Now, in that verse of Scripture, if we aren't careful, 
we'll look at send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. We'll look at that. Especially as young Christians. This is where I'm going. Everything that Jesus went through, He went through it for our example. And He faced all kind of rejection from the time He was born until the cross. They didn't like Him. They didn't like, as Doyle said this morning, you and I, when folks don't like us, it's not us. But if they're lost, it's the evil spirit that's within them that doesn't like the good spirit, that battle that's always been there. We'll look and we'll see that He's going to send us. But listen, you got to remember that first part. Behold, I send you. Now, he tells us plainly to go out in the highways and hedges. He tells us plainly to go out and talk to people. Now, I'll share something right here with you, and it'll probably make you upset. <laughs> but it's still the truth. It's really not the pastor's place to go visiting. I do, I will, I always have, and I probably always will. But it's the church. It's Yorns' place to invite folks and talk to them and tell them. But either way, when we in here, we're in our comfort zone. But when we go out of here, we're in a world, for the most part, that don't like Jesus. Because it means living a life that is set apart. It means living a life that separates from sin and doesn't partake of sin and ungodliness. Now I thought the minute that I seen Harper walk in this morning, well, carry it in. I'm sorry. It won't be long the way she's going. She'll be a walking in. Was it? Again? But I want you to think about something. I want you to think real hard and serious with me right here. Harper's what? Uh, six, seven months? Summer's right? Six? Now you think about that. Now I want you to get a grip on what I'm fixing to say. How many of you would take Harper outside and set her down out there on that bank and everybody just go home and leave her there? You wouldn't do that, would you? You realize? <laughs> do you realize? Do you realize that that's what we do when young children go to uh, school? They go outside and they don't have the Lord. That's about what it's like. If they don't have Jesus, they're going out into a world. I, anymore, all I do when I go out, honest to Jesus, I sit there. And I look at people. And I see all kind of people. I see some and their appearance is so scary. Denise and I was out yesterday for a little while. And we saw this person standing there. And this person was near as old as I am. And still hadn't decided if they wanted to be a man or a woman. And you say, what? Well, that's people without God. The only difference between me and that individual is Jesus Christ saved my soul and moved inside of my heart and enabled me to see what I needed to be, what I needed to do, help me to don't look at folk and determine how wicked, how nasty, how ugly, how, oh, how, whatever they are, look at them as somebody that's been uh, just walked away from, somebody that has been not cared for, raised by grandparents or great-grandparents, raised on the street, trying to survive any way they could. 
He said, I'm sending you out in the midst of wolves. Now, boy, I'm telling you, when you get to thinking about that, he said, uh, well, I've lost my verse. Anyway, he said that I'm sending you out, and he said, these wolves out there in sheep's clothing, these wolves, they, they's all around. I'm going to say something right here. It might hurt you too. Or you might not like it. I'm sorry. Not really, but anyway. We have young girls in this day and age, 16, 17, 18 years old. We have young boys just like them. Never been brought up right. Never been taken to church. Not bad individuals. They are good individuals down in their heart. They've just not had anybody to teach them right from wrong. And Satan is waiting for that young boy to fall for that young girl. He goes to church and he loves God. And all that, that's all it is. We'll get them in church. Hallelujah. We'll get them in church and they'll change. Sometimes. But the whole point is, he wants to pull them. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I had a lot of good old buddies when I was growing up, and they didn't go, some of them didn't go to church. And boy, I just listen. Well, now, if you, if you get out there and get with them young folk and be friends to them, you can go to church with you. You know what happened? Well, I've been raised in church all of my life. You know what I found out? I was out of church just like they was. Satan is the prince and the power of the air. Now, with that being said, the wolves that are out there, I want first, I want us to think real quickly about the defense. The defense for those little ones. For your children, for your grandchildren, for those in school or wherever. What's their defense? What would be oh there it is. What would be Harper's defense if she was sitting out there? Oh, I'm sure her family and everybody in this church would be wrapped around her. I'm just making a figure of speech if she was out there. Or any other child, Cannon for that matter. I mean, he's a oh, I'm sorry. She didn't like me talking about Cannon. But if Cannon was out there. I mean, he, he, he's a young man that's going to Cane River next year? Is it? Second year at Cane River. Okay, I'm sorry. Now, I didn't believe this until my girls told me. He got so bad for a hot mountain heritage that they had to put litter boxes. <laughs> that some of them wanted to be kitty cats. I like that one old fella's article. His boy come in one day and he said, Dad, I'll tell you what, I've decided I want to be a cat. And Mom and Dad said, turn and look at him for a while. Finally, after a while, Dad said, All right, son, get over in the corner. And he said, I'll bring you something to eat. No, he said, furthermore, I don't allow cats in my house. So you go to the barn, you stay out there, you find rats to live on and stay warm the best way you can. And he went on and on. About ten minutes later, that son looked at him and he said, Dad, is it all right if I just stay your son? Under God, if some of these parents would grow a backbone about them and stand up to them and say, Hey, you're a man. You're a woman. You're not all this other stuff. God didn't make you that way. God never made no mistakes, and that would be a mistake. They're sending them out into the world unprepared. The first thing that these little fellows need to know is that Jesus is the shepherd. Hallelujah. He's the shepherd. He's the good shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. He's the corner shepherd. Praise God. He's everything that they need. 
Boy, how that they need that in their hearts. How how you do that? By the Word. By the Word. Huh? You know why I'm different in that aspect than some people? Because I was raised up with the Bible read at home. Listen, a lot of times people want to throw rocks at the school. I'm going to tell you something. This is just me. But if you don't teach them about Jesus at home, don't tell that, that that teacher is there. Well, when I was in school, she was there to teach us two plus two. She was there to tell us how to subtract. She tried to tell us English, but I hated it so bad. I didn't want nothing to do with hitting her in either one. But honey, the point is, not the school's place. It's your place to get them around. And dad, if you are the head of the house, like God told you to be, it's up to you to get that children around and that wife the things of God and read the Bible to them and pray with them and love them and show them where they can come, no matter if they make a wrong turn. The Lord, Lord, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. And until you get into that and study it and meditate on it and eat it and see what it's all about, oh Lord, thy word have I put in my heart. And I put that word in there that told me that sin has a payday. And I found that out. (laughs) Amen. Brother, I'm telling you, we're sheep in the midst of wolves closing, but we have the shepherd and he gave us the resources, each and every one of us. You ever sat around and real? I, I used to as a young man. I take some of these old people in this church that's gone to heaven now, and I look at their lives, and I can't help it. One up, old Junior Honeycutt, he was always just, <laughs> he was always Junior. And I love that man to death, and I'd watch him, even after he left Zion, I'd go to his house. I mean, uh, I, I seen Junior. Deteriorate in health. I seen for a period of time his boys kick out and run wild. And I'm telling you, I'd look at Junior and I'd think, how in the world, how in the world does he keep going? And he'd look you out straight in the face and he'd say, but God, God makes a difference. God makes a difference in your life. I'm not here this morning to please Frank Scott. I love him to death. No, nobody else. I'm here to obey and do what God says, church. And He tells me to send out the warning and tell them to be careful. Without Jesus, their only hope is that eternal flame. Without Jesus. But we have. He said, well, He said, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Oh, have mercy. Church, please, when you see these, I don't know how many of you do this. I figure there's several men. Even old Caleb back there, when he goes out, takes uh, Abby or Harper and Maddie shopping. Sometimes you may sit on a bench and take care of the baby and let her shop. I don't know, though. He might be so proud of the baby. He wants to just walk around. So I would be. But the point is, when you see, now listen good, when you see these young people with all their attire <laughs> that we thought was so despicable when we was growing up, don't, don't, don't throw rocks at them. Think about where they may have come from. Think about what they may be living in right now. They may not have that loving home. Church, there is many one-parent homes and that parent is doing the very best that they can and I would never say nothing negative. But I'm going to tell you, it takes mom and dad. It takes mom and dad. And when he he, he says mom and dad, he didn't mean Adam and Steve. He said Adam and Eve. (laughs) So he'll say, the Lord's sending us out. Now my point is, and I'm going to finish up. My point is, did you hear what Dole said? Uh, did you hear what Dole said this morning? You, hear, you didn't hear what Dole said. 
That's okay, but I want to try to say it if I can. Doyle said they stood up there on the square this week and that garbage they had up there. And they, they witnessed to people. Different ways they tried to witness to people. And there's one or two of them come by and said, believe in that garbage. I want to do that junk. You know what you see when you see that person? The very next step. in the book of Samuel says, that there's but a step between me and death. Have you got somebody, don't raise your hand. But have you got somebody here this morning that's lost? Somebody that you're afraid that might not be saved. The very next step they take, a little Mike Boone, just retired this week as a police officer after 32 years. Individual hit him head on. I don't know none of the details. I don't need to know. They're both dead. The young man that he said was the other one had those children. Four children. What are they doing this morning? They're sitting there. Where's dad? What are we going to do? How are we going to eat? How are we going to live? I pastored a church one time and a woman's husband died unexpectedly. And so she was a good person. She was a good person. She found herself living with a man to try to survive. Don't tell me you won't do something. If you've got children, someone told me the other day that, is it Amazon? Amazon already had the chip developed for the back of your hand. I can't prove that. And you, 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 slice, you slice a little spot in your hand and you slide that chip under there. And let it heal. You notice a lot, a, a lot of few, a lot of places anymore. We don't take cash. We want, we want, we want to be on cards. What would we do? What would we do? You, you, you take the chip. Now I believe. Well, I understand Paul will be out of here, but you know, think about it. Church, this thing's about over. You've got friends and family that's lost or out of church or away from God or just lost. The I don't care. Doyle said it best this morning. He does a lot and don't even know it. We're living in a lazy generation. I can say that for me. And I could go into detail, but I'm not going to. Lazy. Comfort zone. Everything's going good. Don't rock the boat. Lord, you go. The devil's told me all week long. I called my brother this morning about 7 or 8 o'clock. I said, Tony, please pray. Just pray. The devil has, oh, he's, he's tried his best to give me a fit. Roger, if you go to Zion and you go in down there and you start doing this and you start doing that, it don't matter if the Lord's leading you or not. The devil's going to do his best. You know what will happen? I'm, I'm trying to hurry. Really, I am. And I won't try not to make this no habit. But I'm going to tell you something. If we, start, if we start going for God, and the Lord, when He starts bringing folks in, don't let... Well, you know what Frank said about you? Discourse. Discourse. Brother, I wouldn't have your, I wouldn't have your job for your, your, for your shoes. I wouldn't have your job for nothing. Being a police officer. The stress. You see, ain't none of us got no guarantee of coming home. We ain't got no guarantee of getting home from right here. But with his job... He goes to work tomorrow, whenever he goes to work. He ain't got no job. It don't guarantee it. He'll come back and see his little daughter. And that over there. I ain't trying to scare you, buddy. I'm trying to tell you the truth. We don't have no promises. We don't have no guarantees of nothing. I try to make it a habit. Listen, we are everyone. 
we're every one just like a little boy going down the road. And we're pulling out a little red wagon and we're just having the best time it's ever been. And all of a sudden we start praying and begging and pleading for our children and our husbands and those that are lost. We know the Lord's coming. We know that if they don't get saved, we know they'll spend eternity in that awful place. What awful place? Hell. That's where they'll be. Don't try to sugarcoat it. That's what the Bible calls it. That's where they'll be without Jesus. And we're going along and all of a sudden somebody comes along, maybe even somebody that we love, and they take and lay something on our little wagon. And the first thing you know, we've thrown the little wagon. We're blessing everybody out. Stress, stress has gotten us, honey. That's the sheep sowing uh, the wolf, uh, sowing discord and trouble in the house of God. Now I'm going to tell you, the Bible says, Satan walked about with a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now we know we're in the last days. According to the Bible, according to everything we see, we're in the last days. The wolves is everywhere. The wolves is everywhere. Yeah. And they're looking. And the thing about it is, sometimes it's done kind of accidentally. They didn't really mean to. I found out in my life, when I lose it, the people I hurt worse is Denise. Oh, she's a good woman, Renee. I know that. A million times over, she's the best. Nobody else would have never stayed with me and put up with this stuff. But she has. Now, don't you kid yourself. The devil has tried a billion times. I got to the point, listen, I'm not attractive, but I'm a man. And I worked with 50 women at Greenlee Primary School. And some of them was young and attractive women. But you know what? I went to that school day in and day out. And every day when I come home, I take a few minutes and tell Denise everything that went on. I wasn't going to get in the middle of Walmart and have some woman coming up telling a lie or trying to make something out of something that wasn't. I told her everything, right, babe? Everything that went on. It, it, I, 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 I want to get... <laughs> I want to get on the battlefield. I want to get on the battlefield. I hope you can understand that. I know on the battlefield you get wounded and sometimes killed. Yeah, I'm telling you, this, I want on the battle. God never called me to be a water boy. But you know what? I have to have you. I have to have you. I have to have your support. I have to have your help. I have to have your prayers. And every time you think, boy, that was a pretty good message, you raise your hand and praise God because if you was a praying, you had a hand in it as much as anybody. I'm just a vessel. I'm nothing. And I try to make all my decisions according to the will of God about anything. Sometimes you ask me something, I may tell you no. I'll go pray about it. If the Lord shows me something different, I'll come back. But listen, church, the wolves, the lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. But you know what? You know what I found out? <laughs> we have Jesus. We have Jesus. Praise God. The one that's already told Satan a long time ago, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> God help us. I want you to leave today. I want you to leave thinking, who? Who in my family? Who in my community? Who around could I invite to church? Be sure and tell them one thing now. They're looking for the perfect church. Don't come. Because there's nothing perfect here except for Jesus. God help us, I pray. He sends us forth. And there's wolves everywhere. But we have him. The line of the tribe of Judah. Praise God. He'll take care of it. We'll just ask him. Please help. Please help. Pray. Pray hard. Lord, we thank you today for these few words. 
Lord, as we bow our head before you this morning, if you've touched the heart of the church, I pray they'd move today. God, I pray, Lord, if there's a need in anyone's heart, Lord, that they'll turn it to you. Lord, we just thank you for being our Savior, our strength, our comfort, our guide. God, help us today. Help us to see our children, our grandchildren, our husbands and our wives. Lord, help us to see their condition. We don't have to know if they're saved or lost, but God, we do need to know there's a need there. We need to see that need, and we need to pray the touch of God to meet that need. Go with us, I pray today, Lord Jesus. While we pray for just a moment, and I'm not going to keep you, I already kept you long and meant to, but is there anybody here this morning, you got a special need in your heart. Put your hand up right back down. Anybody? God bless the hand. God bless the hand. God bless the hand. Lord, we thank you again. Go with us now. Watch over us. Help us. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. All righty. Remember the service tonight at 7.